Einstein gets so smart. Every time I find him here in the salon, he is just reading all sorts of fun stuff. I don't know if you want to call it reading. You're just looking at picture I look books. At pictures. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's how it works. He's just looking at what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the Raycor fuel filter, water separator. There's plenty of pictures in here, so it's my kind of book. You know? <laughs> Why are you reading about that? I'm just cleaning all the fuel filters and gonna polish our fuel system. It's kind of cool. The old owner gave us a little diagram of how the fuel polishing system works. This is all super well organized. Yeah, kind of nice that he drew it all out for us like that. Cool. Pretty cool. So I'm just trying to figure this all out. Clean our filters and we have a pretty low fuel tank right now so I should be able to do a full transfer from one tank to the other and kind of polish all that fuel and then we'll go fill up with all new fuel since it's fairly cheap right now five bucks a gallon we're stoked on that old guy was laughing at us for being stoked on five bucks a gallon it's <laughs> funny but it is what it is. Yeah, we took the dinghy over there not too long ago and just to explore the prices we filled up the dinghy um, with some fuel and he well he did tell us it was like a deal that we got if we filled up our whole boat like he would charge us five dollars and yeah we were so excited we we're like five dollars we definitely thought it'd be seven because gas prices are getting close to six around here in LA. So $5 was a steal, but that being said, the older gentleman that was just kind of lurking around the fuel station, he was laughing at us saying, oh, I, I remember when it was 25 cents a gallon. And I'm like, yeah, those days are long gone, buddy. I wish. Are you making Kool-Aid? <laughs> making Kool-Aid. Aw, that's lemonade so nice. Kool we should start a lemonade stand. This is from one tank. Yeah. Oh, it's not lemonade, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> All diesel fuel. So the red diesel is what you get at the boat dock, at the fuel dock here. The orange or whatever okay, may have been from the regular gas station or maybe from Mexico or something like that. But usually all of our... Um, domestic and I don't know I guess it's for farming and everything like that they put like red dye in it I believe to identify it and I think it's kind of taxed differently or something like that too so pretty sure if you put that in your car and get caught with it you will get in trouble but it's good for for tractors and for boats and all that kind of stuff but yeah so we're just kind of emptied out all the filters here you can see these filters are pretty nasty down here so there's a lot of little sediment build up in there i just put this little pex on there just to kind of funnel it down past everything so i could catch the the diesel out of there i know it's not an approved fuel line but it's not really sitting in there for long just acting as a funnel for now so i'm just going to take all these apart and it seems to be a little bit complicated i don't know if i'm going to be doing this wrong but to take these apart i think i pretty much have to drop this frame out of there and then i can get this bowl off of there because i just want to clean up all of this stuff that's pretty nasty in there and once i clean it up then we'll be able to kind of see how dirty it gets when i polish the whole fuel system to get a feel for how how filthy our tanks are. Using hand tools. That's a um, flathead, just kidding. <laughs> it's a Phillips. Flathead. I know it's a Phillips. Well, my idea seems to work, I think. I don't know if this is how they designed it, but that'll do. Got her out. Look at all that murk in there. And then this whole thing too. This is the water separator actually. Spins through that centrifuge, I believe, and then somehow the water is heavier than the diesel. So the water will sink to the bottom and then you can just drain out the water through here once it's settled at the bottom. This does still look like all diesel fuel. Supposedly you should see kind of a clean line between the water and diesel if there were any water in there. 
so it looks like we're good in that aspect but there's a lot of a lot of crap in there so let me clean it all up i know i probably don't want to be doing this right now uh, yeah i thought you were cleaning the diesel tanks <laughs> this is what diesel happened tank. well you're cleaning the diesel filters i was cleaning the filters i that was that all time. Just trying to film him with this clean filters because I'm so surprised he's cleaning something. And then all of a sudden, I almost stepped into the abyss of the tanks. <laughs> so, basically, I'm just checking all these access ports because we have no idea what's under here or how long ago it was cleaned um i can kind of see down this little clean out port right here and this one and the tank looks pretty clean but in between here there's baffles to keep the fuel from from sloshing around in there so we have to open all these to really inspect all the tanks my buddy from Oceanside, dylan mobile filtration if anyone needs any help does diesel tank cleaning and he was saying, telling me some horror stories about how people will use a full rubber gasket across the entire access plate right here. And then eventually the, the fuel kind of gets slapped up inside of it. And then that gasket will become pregnant until it all bursts. And then all of that gasket material goes down into your tank and then clogs up the, the holes in between the baffles or the uptake tubes or... You know, or even gets into your filter system and hoses and everything else. So I'm going to double check and make sure that the previous owner did this properly. And hopefully we're all good and the gasket goes on smooth and I don't have to cut a new one. But that's the project for the day. You guys want to stay tuned. I can only got two bolts left. And I'm a little bit scared to pull this off because how much crap's going to fall in there when I do. This one actually looks like it was more of a sealant, like a silicone kind of thing than a gasket too. I'm going to vacuum this. Sorry guys, bear with me. He's cleaning. Wow! So this is exactly what I was kind of worried about. I ended up leaving these ones. These ones both seem like it's more of like a glue kind of silicone type material. This one might be more rubber, but this is the one I could see down this access little port here that the rubber was kind of caving in. And it doesn't look, I think they cut this away on purpose so that they could see down through this. So I don't think anything has fallen down into the tank yet. We can look, I guess. It's not that full. And we can see down there. I don't see any, any rubber in there. But this is pretty weak and it looks like it's been deformed a little bit. So I'm just gonna cut around this, I think. I think this gasket should still be fine. It feels kind of pliable enough to me. I'm gonna cut that around and get rid of all this material that could potentially fall into the tank. Plus this is our most critical one because this is where uptake is. If any of these baffles get clogged, obviously that sucks because we won't get the fuel into this one. But if this one gets clogged in the uptake, then we're really uh, Malvina's gonna have some swimming practice, so <laughs> <laughs> gotta get that bike going. <laughs> yeah, I'm constantly begging Connor. I keep finding on offer uh, old spin bikes and different workout bikes, and we watched the race to Alaska, and we s saw all these different kinds of boats that. You know, you race to Alaska, I think it's from, where is it, from Port Townsend, and you cannot have a motor. So a lot of people get really creative in how they're going to leave the harbor before they start sailing. So we saw those spin bikes, love the idea, and so I told him, if there's no wind, spin. 
I'll spin for you, baby. I'll take us there. I'll pedal us there without the wind. That's his next project when he gets done with this. <laughs> then I won't have to do all this maintenance anymore. I'll just rely on Malvina. <laughs> pedal power. As you can see by the look on her face, she just dropped this camera. I and kicked it. She kicked it. Even worse. <laughs> It not off nice. of my office because <laughs> I was just testing. Testing, how, testing. Testing how durable it was. Let's punch it now. <laughs> just went through and loosened all those uh, bolts from the top and vacuumed around it. I've been very careful to uh, vacuum around, even using this tiny little vacuum attachment that really gets in there to all the bolt holes just in case anything were kind of lingering on the edge we want to minimize there's always going to be a little bit i'm sure of uh, rust and whatever that might fall into the tank but at least we can minimize it and avoid clogging some fuel filters and fuel lines yeah about ready to pop this thing off and see how she looks all right just got it off and that came off really easily it's a little shallower than i thought it was gonna be not a bad thing but yeah, I was expecting it to be deeper for some reason. Another thing that I forgot to mention that I did, I'm sure not too many of you guys are going to be doing this, but my buddy Dylan, also the one that cleans fuel tanks, recommended, and I'm glad he did. Thank you, Dylan, for recommending I put a mark right here so that I can align all those bolt holes back up with where they went. So I labeled it port and starboard to get me in the general direction, and then I drew one line there and one line there that I can kind of line up and, and get that back on there smooth. And we'll see what we can kind of stir up in there and yeah, see how putting a, an electric fuel sender on there is gonna look. Okay, maybe this is self-explanatory to everyone else except for me, but I never realized that those little tank tender gauges actually, it, there's a code up here that the uh, previous owner kind of came up with and it says main diesel engine 25 and 3 quarter inches is full auxiliary diesel 12 and a half is full not inches and then if you go over here might be hard to see but that also measures in inches of water and then inches of diesel on the outer ring there and so when I pump these, it ends up going, this one ends up, the auxiliary tank ends up at about nine and a half or so inches of diesel, which is pretty damn close actually to what this is. I just stuck a yardstick down there and I'm getting 10 and a quarter. So pretty freaking accurate and then now I just thought of this actually is that hose for the tank tender goes down and I don't think that goes all the way to the bottom of the tank so it's about as accurate as it can get pretty cool learn something new every day after realizing the accuracy of the little reader there, I think I'm just gonna leave well enough alone. So I just kind of cleaned it up and put it back on. One thing, the gasket did want to keep falling off. So I ended up putting a bunch of bolts in first to hold the gasket in there, but you don't want to put all of them in or else you can't see that you're in the right holes. Got that all on there and we're gonna close this back up. Call it good. I'm feeling very fortunate to have this boat. Everything I <laughs> would expect is better than I could expect, so. <laughs> I'm feeling very fortunate to find such a good condition gas tank. I'll finish that. Connor's finding treasures. So I found this old plate. I thought we had 200 gallons of fuel, but it appears that we have 72 in this one. And I think the other one was 97 or something. I'll have to check again. But I got this old plate and it's kind of cool because it shows you the thickness of the aluminum, kind of the dimensions of the tank. You know, hopefully we'll never have to get this replaced or anything, but I found this old trick where you can rub a dry erase marker over all this old engraving and then you wipe off the whole thing and the dry erase marker will stay in 
the engraved part and come off the surface so it's way easier to read. So I'm going to do that to the rest of it and show you what we got. Love it. All right, you can see all the blue all over it right now. And it's still pretty hard to read, but once I wipe this all off, then you can read. We got year, capacity, material, liquid, pressure test. So we got, is that only five PSI on the pressure test? Diesel for the liquid. 5086H32 aluminum 0.19 must be the thickness of the wall. I don't know. Maybe that's in millimeters, centimeters, something. Built in 1976, one year before the boat, and 72 US gallons for capacity. Pretty cool. Lot of bolts on this thing. This is how we wake up the neighborhood. <laughs> they love us. It's Robbie's favorite song. Yeah. <laughs> this is the rhythm of the night. She loves my head. That's it. This is the rhythm of the night. <laughs> Fuck that one up. I got no rhythm. It's another kind of neighborhood. Don't you want to be our neighbor? <laughs> Won't you be Won't my you neighbor? Won't you be my neighbor? <laughs>